Hey guys, welcome everybody to another video. Today, I have a pleasure of talking to Alex Mitrich, who is a very good tennis player coming out of, out of Canada. And he's been at the top of national ranking for a really, really long time. And recently having winning, you know, the national uh, Canadian uh, championship U18. And he's been pretty much, you know, at the top uh, of of tennis in Canada, uh, starting from U12, where I, I believe he finished fifth, and then you know stayed stayed there till till now. And I think he's training in Florida right now. So we we have a really good uh, opportunity to talk to him and ask him ask him some questions. But first, Alex, before before I even let you speak about tennis, like I have to bring this up. Like you asked me. You asked me to start this conversation earlier because some girls invited you to a yacht. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. That it. Is that yeah, why yeah. all Canadian players want to train to fl in Florida? Is that what it is? I mean, it's definitely a reason. I mean, I really like it down here. I mean, everything <laughs> off court, it's amazing. I, off court, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, for sure. I can I can see. <laughs> is it raining yeah, right now? Sorry. Is it raining right now outside? Uh, it's not, but it will rain. But okay. hopefully that won't affect anything later. Oh, man. Oh, man. So <laughs> it's like, you know, like it's it's interesting because you can uh, see like uh, a lot of kids are like training here, but they're like, yeah, we have to go to Florida. So that's, I think that's like the, that's the hidden reason why, you know, like uh, the but training is, the training is better there, right? No, you found the secret. You found the secret. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I had to ask because that was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Um, but listen, let's let's start maybe um from your childhood. You know, how did you get into tennis? I know your brother, you have older brother Ivan who plays as well, but yeah. do you remember how you get started? Yeah, I mean well, as I mean I have an older brother Ivan. Um, you know, there's a big age gap between us, six years, and he uh he started I mean, at the age of five, six, he was his favorite sport. And then, um, honestly, I, when he was 11, 12, that's when I was five, six years old. And um, honestly, I just started playing tennis with him, you know, in the driveway. I, I really liked it. That's when he started taking tennis really seriously. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't really, I, I guess I didn't really choose to play any sports. Tennis was always that one mm. sport um, that... I was really focused on at a young age. I, I played soccer recreational when I was seven, eight years old, but I didn't really find too much talent in, in me uh, there. And obviously I, I just really liked tennis. I built a bit like a better connection with my brother, my, my parents. And that, that's how, that's how it started because I was very already tennis oriented, even at such a young age. So um, yeah. So, so you you feel like it's uh it's more your brother's uh like interest in tennis and like because he was so heavily involved, you kind of were like you finding yourself with the racket or like with the ball just because it was like everywhere in yes. your house and yeah, you just I, let... yeah yeah I just followed his his footsteps really mm -hmm. and it, I know I liked it because you know my parents they always asked me you know make sure you pick a sport you like because they wanted me to be an athlete just like my older brother and. But I, I really like tennis. I mean, I I remember I took it very competitively. I was a little bit of a crybaby since I was a little guy, you know. But I, I was very competitive. I I thought I thought it was a really good choice. I mean, yeah. No, no, for sure, for sure, and we yeah. can we can see it now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so listen, um, you you like obviously you're following your your brother's footsteps, but you're developing a game for for yourself. So yeah. what do you think? What do you think was uh, like the biggest influence like for your game, like for your game style? Like who did you get it from? Yeah, um, I mean, at the start, well, my brother and I, it wasn't for my brother because we, we have very, very different games. He's a very crafty player. I'm, I'm more, uh, I guess I'm more fundamental and aggressive, you know? Um, but I, I think I got my game I hate to say it, but partly from Rafa because okay. I'm, I'm not, you know, I respect the guy so much, but I'm not a big fan of him because, you know, my favorite player is Novak. But <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a lefty. He's a lefty. He, he <clears throat> earlier than Novak. 
I always liked watching Rafa play. And I remember I was like five, six years old, years old. I was at uh, Oakville and RC and, and I was like hitting my foreign like this, you know, I was slicing, I was grunting. So I think partly I got my game from Rafa. Um, and, and then as I got older, I just, I just, uh, you know, I just played the way I wanted to play and, and see how I win points, you know, like how, how, I, I, what I like, something I like about myself is that I, as I grew older and matured, I, I never really wanted to copy anyone's game, you know, mm-hmm. like Novak is my favorite player, but his game style is completely different from mine. You know, I do my own thing, even if he's mine. Um, yeah, well, for so, sure. Yeah. So you mentioned like, it's interesting because you mentioned like you started, uh, you know, to find uh, a lot of attractiveness in Rafa's game when you were yeah. like at 12. So yeah. that brings, brings a good question. Like, um, at what age, I guess you started watching tennis on TV or like on iPad, like, uh, because yeah. you know, like this generation, even younger than you, like it's yeah. like with every generation, it gets harder and harder for kids to, to actually watch any, any games, any like matches, like from start to finish, it's not even sometimes highlights. It's just like reels now. So before it was highlights that people watch right now, it's just like one minute, two minute reels. Right, so right. What was it for you that made you understand that Rafa is the is the guy? Did you watch matches or how, how did yeah, you connect? So so the fir- very first match I remember that I, I watched, I think it's the greatest match of all time, was 2012 Australian Open. Five hours and 53 yeah. minutes. Yeah. The Nadal match. Of course. And, it, it, is so, it the one when, where he had a lot of blisters? Like, and uh, they yes. were keeping, yeah, that's like, yes. that's, that's classic. And when Djokovic went like this after he yeah. won. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. No. So that was, that was almost 11, 11 years ago. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, I was seven, six, seven years old. And I watched that with my, with my brother and my dad at around three, four a.m. because it was in, uh, it was in Australia. That's so amazing. that was the first match I watched. But back then, I actually liked, Nadal more than Novak, believe mm, it or not. Wow. Because I was such a little boy, you know, I uh, I, I just I, I just love the, the way the guy plays. Your, your family didn't tell you yet who you should like <laughs> more. They did they did, but I, I didn't really <laughs> listen to them. So until until I realized later on, you know, Serbian Djokovic, whatever. But uh <laughs> but yeah, that's that's probably the first match I watched and I also I sometimes in my head I remember a few Miami Open matches better in the Dal play in 06, 07. So that that's something I remember too. And then later on, of course, as I grew grew older, I, I watched matches, you know, all the time. So, mm-hmm. And yeah. where did you train? Like under twelve years old? Like because uh, I remember at twelve yeah. you, you you started uh, tennis Canada. Yeah. Like, so before that, I was training at ORC okay. um, from the age of five to eleven, twelve, and then. Okay. Who was your coach? Uh, Did you have a, a personal uh, Peter, coach? Uh, Peter. Peter. Peter was, okay. uh, was my coach. And uh, Adam, he was, uh, he was. Uh, I think he went to Ace after and then uh, forgot his last name. But they were both really good coaches. Yeah, of course. Uh, Andrea uh, Resbeck, she yes. was also a very good coach. And Gary Muller, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, he, so I, I had a really good group around me at a young age, which definitely helped me um, become a better player too. And of course I had my brother to hit with. No, no, of course that's a, that's a huge advantage, right? So yeah. So I trained there since I was five to 11, 12 ish. And then as I became a better player, then obviously tennis Canada um, in, invited me um, um, fortunately to be part of their program. And then, and then I was working with, you and and uh, Nico and those guys and, for three and years. Andre, yeah, yeah, that's and that's good time. Paolo, yeah, so th- that that's my journey. And then after I'm here in Florida training, grinding. So yeah. <laughs> so then, no, that's 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 fantastic. So yeah. uh, if if you could remember, like uh, I know it's maybe maybe it's a hard question, but like what was the most important thing that your coaches taught taught you under 12 like before you got to tennis canada like what was uh, the most, so is there c- certain things that stick out so before tennis canada i i don't remember too much but i know i know it was just generic things more focused on court rather mm-hmm. than off court 
But then I know once I came to Tennis Canada, especially with you as, you know, my mentor, not just my coach, core values was mm. number one thing, you know, regardless on court. I remember uh, the first week, it was a Friday, uh, I had it with you. We I was training with Sasha. We had some semi-private. I, was, I don't know if you remember, I was crying because I couldn't make a backhand. You remember that I was before this interview, I was like, I'm going to bring it up because you were crying yeah. like a little baby. Okay. I like know. after like first week, it's like, oh my God, he knows my backhand is bad. And he was going yeah. to the backhand. It's like, you know, like I was like, oh my God, we're going to have a fun time with this guy. I know. I know. Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was the first week. And then um, after that, you started obviously, uh, well, then we went on trips, Austria, Germany. This was later on, but, you know, I you just taught me a lot of core values. You know, obviously on court is important, but off court I was, you know, it, it's very important. You know, even the big three, these guys are so respectful off court. You know, that's why they're, that's yeah. why they have so many fans as well, you know. And, you know, I mean, I think uh, accountability is something that I was lacking because mm -hmm. I never really thought things were my fault. You know, I was always trying to blame blame on, you know, someone else or something or, oh, the wind or the sun or the clay, you know. But now uh, you taught me, you know, to be more responsible, to bring my band, extra water, you know, being very respectful to, to everyone. So I think I'm a much, a much better person, not just because I matured, but because... No, oh, of course. You and Tennis Canada have helped me. Um, that's evolve. that's that's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. So, yeah. w once you like, obviously, you twelve. It's more like fundamentals, you know. Like, and once you go like twelve to to four to fourteen, fifteen, like that that age, it's yeah. it's 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 a lot of like it. That was have that had to be done, you know. Those values, those like not only like on court like ethics and work ethics but also off the court how you present yourself how do you how you deal with uh adversity because you start traveling right and then a lot of things happen on the road like <laughs> like you we have plenty of stories you know like we're not gonna it's yeah. like uh, we, we'll get to stories like of of, of the tours later but but yeah. uh since we're kind of following this uh, uh journey of yours like if since you moved to Florida, and I know um, maybe maybe let's talk about because you spent some time with uh, uh, at Joshua Creek, who who actually like did a lot for you, you know, like in terms yes. of your you know next level development. Yes. So maybe let's highlight them a little bit as well. Like, sure, can you sure. can you maybe say something? Uh, yeah. What stuck like that? What they taught you, you know? In yeah, that um, of course. I mean, Victor and David are and Martin. They're really good coaches as well. I think. I think I actually think Joshua Creek really that's when I noticed the biggest gap mm -hmm. like of improvement because you know 13 14 I'm still young I'm still hitting the ball harder my, I'm completely undeveloped you know my body's undeveloped but now I came to Joshua Creek February 2021 so during you know right after covid I guess mm -hmm. you know, there are a few of those lockdowns in Toronto, but when it opened up again, um, it was really difficult for me because, you know, I, we all had to quarantine, stay safe. We took, I took months off tennis. I didn't touch a tennis racket. Mm -hmm. You know, I could only do so much fitness at home. So my body wasn't fit either. And then in February, right away from the first day, we we're doing fitness, running, mainly running. Uh, 6 a.m. practices, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and then playing in the afternoon too. So it was very, it was a pr very professional schedule. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult for me at first because I'm not used to, um, you know, practicing so much and having so much fitness, especially after so much time off. Uh, but then, but then, I mean, after a, a lot of privates and after so many lessons, you know, I mean, I had a really good group too. You know, I had a uh, Kurtan, Nemanja, um, right. Stefan Simunovic, Oakville, you know, and a, and a few college guys came or Jesse Flores comes. And so I had a really good hit too. And, you know, when, when there's so much volume, um, I just co continued improving a lot. And mm -hmm. we went to Florida um, for two weeks 
two, three weeks, played a futures and then kept on training. So I also have to thank them, of course, like you said, because course, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed the biggest, the biggest difference in, in my game from February, 2021 to uh, April, 2022 after nationals, it was, it was night and day. I mean, the consistency, my fitness, I, I was, I was a different person. So, okay. yeah. And what made you what made you move to Florida apart from girls inviting you to yachts once in a while? Apart 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 from that awesome stuff. Um I, I mean I found a really good coach here. Um mm -hmm. Jeff, he I think he suits me very well. He he really knows my game, my game style and what I need to improve on. And also um Florida, I mean, nothing against Canada, it's just Florida. I think the the level is, yeah, is of course. a little better and, and there are just more tournaments year around that are higher level to, to say, you know, and mm -hmm. in Canada, realistically, I can play indoor and outdoor nationals to play some really good and competitive matches. But besides that, there aren't too many, too many high level matches for me to play. It's so, true. so, so Once that's you get to I, a certain level. Yes. It's, it's, yeah, like, exactly. it's, it's either right. ITFs or, you know, nationals. Exactly. And, and, even again, and again, ITFs, when you're, when, when you're paying a loan, you know, expenses are, you know, it adds up really, you know, I mean, there aren't too many J1s, high level ITFs, you know, there are in North America, of course, but, you know, I also have school and everything. So, so I've, I'm very lucky. Um, I have these uh, family friends. They let me stay here at their pool house and, mm very welcoming family they let me stay here whenever it's 10 minutes from the tennis club and um my school is online so i guess i'm taking it to you know um to an advantage as well because i'm you know i have a very more flexible time time 100%. schedule so. yeah no that's great i think that's yeah. that's what you gotta do if you're yeah, if yeah. you um, yeah. if you want to take it serious and I guess uh, next logical question like how far do you want to take it like what's your plan is yeah. your you gotta actually like like when I was doing a, your uh, introduction I forgot to say uh, like another achievement of yours like you got accepted to Princeton yeah, yeah. which is like holy shit right <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty big man like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people can say that so yeah. what is your what is your plan as you like obviously you you're going to university, right? Yes. So what is what is the plan there? Like, do you do so, you do? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, actually, a few people asked me these these this that question before. Um, so my plan is just to be the best possible player I can be. You know, I, I don't really like to set a specific goal on myself. Mm -hmm. Um, statistically, oh, I want to be top fifty ITF in you know July mm -hmm. or something. I just want to become a better player every single day because I want to stay hungry. You know, I'm going to university. Sure. Next year, I'm going to a great school, great coaches, a great healthy tennis team. Um, you know, not too many uh, uh, college graduates, especially from Ivy League, <laughs> have become ATP professionals. But at the same time, I want to stay hungry, you know, because – I always want to push to become a pro because then I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to lose motivation if, if I don't have that, if that, if I don't have that goal in my mind, you know, I, I, I always want to become a pro because for example, um, I don't know. I played, I played this one Brazilian guy two, two, three months ago and he, a year younger than me, I had match point. I lost seven, six in the third. And now he's in a quarters of a challenger, you know, oh. eating guys that are, 230 in the world you know yeah. so that that kind of motivates me and tells me hey you know five match point against this guy and I almost won and he's you know kicking butt against pros then you know i why not me you know so yeah that's, no that's that's for sure that's logical that's why yeah regardless of university academics and everything i uh my goal no matter what after four years is is to push to become a pro so mm -hmm. yeah you know like you you yeah sorry i just like cannot help but remember like you're saying that uh, you had a match point you lost can you can you tell a story like when you were u12 and you also had match points and you oh boy you know I... you know the you know the match i'm talking about no i know so <laughs> i was playing 
Yes. So that was in Montreal. It was on, I remember it was in Montreal, green clay upstairs. At when the, you were like, uh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. At, at the NTC center, I remember. Okay. So the first day I was up nine, three, it was a super breaker up to 10. I'm up nine, three in the third. And they had to move courts last second because there were some people getting on the court. So they move courts. We play super breaker. I'm up nine, three. And then, you know, Hytham's there, Stewart's there, <laughs> Dasha, and you are there. And then Stefan Conke, the, the, yes. the other coach, yeah. told me, okay, now on match point, I want you to, you know, finish you like a man, you know. <laughs> so I go 9-3, I serve in Bali, you know, it's under 12. I serve in Bali, I lose the point, 9-4, whatever. I go for my second serve mm-hmm. return, 9-5, 9-6, 9-7, 9-8. He, he starts screaming, I have an overhead, like, on top of the net, shank it completely. <laughs> Uh, nine all and then you told me on the changeover okay Alex now you missed so many balls now this this return I want you to just aim deep in the middle of the court so I'm like okay Bogdan and then he hits serves to my four and boom I just hit the tarp off the return and then I, <laughs> and then, and then I lose I lose 11-9 and then that that next day um, I, I was playing uh, another guy I was actually rooming with him at, at a J1 no way yeah, a few months ago. Yeah, uh, huh? Carson. Yeah, um, I was playing him, and I was up nine three again. No so then, way. You know, a little PTSD from from the day. But you closed that one. Yes, I closed that one at ten seven. So, so that was. Uh, that I was, was actually I was actually talking about in another match when I wasn't there. I think it was in Austria, and you were winning a set and five two, and you raised your hands. Oh, That's the one I was talking yes. about. I, I forgot about that. Yes. Oh no! I, that always stays in my mind. I, I was yes. It was Austria. I was up. I was up six one five two. Add add in or add out, and I hit a swing volley. His his lob is going out, so I grease my hand, and the racket touches touches uh touches the ball. Oh so my god! I had another five match points. The guy comes back, wins seven six in the third. <laughs> that's that's why I remembered the second you said like winning seven six in the third after you have a match point. That's that's yeah. that like flashback to that match. Yeah, that was that was unbelievable. I thought I after I lost the second set seven six. Um, I thought everyone thought that I was gonna break down mentally, but I kept on fighting. But I lost oh. seven six in the third. There you go. So you know, like some sometimes you win, sometimes you uh, uh, learn. That, right? was, what they that was the craziest experience I've, yeah. I've had. So, you know, since since we're talking about like traveling and uh, you know like tours and all these stories, like you brought up Montreal, like uh, NTC in Montreal when we traveled in Austria, like what what is your top three um, memories from touring? Not necessarily with Tennis Canada, but like in general. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget Czech Republic. That was. Um, under the 14. World Cup, the prestige that we did, Cup, yeah, under fourteen. Um, that was that was my favorite tour, I would say. Even though it was only six, seven days, I mean, yeah. Do you see the the Japanese thing I have here? It's from the from the Japanese team. Oh, I still, really? I still have it. Yeah, the whole team signed it. That's awesome. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah, yeah. No, um, there's some players that play that tournament who are doing very well right now. I mean. A lot of, a lot of players become professionals. You know, you remember some of those names who who played who played these tournaments. Oh, no, like uh, yeah, like the France won it, no? Like I or uh, yeah, France won. Uh, or a couple uh, boys, U.S. Or no? U.S. won. U.S. U.S. Won. against France, France, though, right? It was France. close. It was close. It was in doubles. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. It was close. Yeah. No, that was probably my favorite experience, given that it was so competitive and so serious, yeah. but at the same time, off court. <laughs> yes. I met so many new kids and you know there were these two really awesome parties that we went to it was you know I, I was 14 is my okay it was play it was player parties organized by the tournament just just yeah. for everybody else listening just, just yes, wanted... yes yes <laughs> yeah, was, uh, players party the first one was outdoors and we were hanging out with Australian guys I'm actually in touch with with, with one of them still that's so cool yeah and then the last day was uh was indoors with with all the Espanol. which one was the first one uh, where was it was it that you uh, in it was, it, it, no it was at it was at this lake 
big oh concert. that's right that's right it was yeah. still in prostyov in Prostyov. Yes, yes, it was. That's right. okay but we went to the lake there was some fireworks some guy like yes. came from the sky like i remember flashing. okay yeah yeah that's yeah. right yeah so that was i mean i would put that at first and then another tour that i really liked um i went to austria twice but yeah i really liked the the second the second year again with you <laughs> oh my god that was that was one of my favorites yeah because all time uh, yeah for sure was in, uh, Kurt Sein, right that was, was it like when sharon came as well and the yes. and scarlet yeah, was scarlet yeah yeah that's yeah. right and sasha I and all, all that that was like the, that was awesome. the, the dream yeah. team like we had so much fun there like yeah. was... no th that was uh that was an awesome experience yeah. um especially because i was there the year before so i already knew the place and and everything and I mean that was awesome, and then we we also went uh, to that to that water slide. That was yeah. amazing. We went to those water slides, and then and then I can't remember. I think when we went to Germany next year, and we went to I think it was called Furstenfeld, and then went to the biggest pool in Europe. Yeah, Furstenfeld is in Austria too. Like it's that oh, second okay. it's that second tournament. Yes, right. Yes, yes, it so is. It's like yeah. Oberpullendorf, and then Furstenfeld, and then you go to Kufstein. So Oberpullendorf, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, Furstenfeld is where the uh, Europe's yeah. uh, biggest pool. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. That was, I mean, that was an unbelievable experience. Um, yeah. uh, that was, I mean, I think Matthew maybe was there too. It's it's so tough to. Remember? Yeah, yeah, I I don't remember actually. I think uh, Matthew might have been there, or maybe yeah. he he wasn't during that tour. Yeah, I, I, I think know. it was. I think it was Sasha, uh, you, Sasha was there, yeah. Stewart for sure. Maybe, maybe it was just me, Stewart, Sasha, and the uh, Haitam in uh, 2019. But I do remember the. Um, but I do <laughs> remember. Um, I remember Matthew somewhere. Being... I remember Matthew forgetting his bag or something, you know, like at, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, like at at the yeah, so in Kufstein. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that was the that was the year Matthew was with us. And yeah. Matthew, but he didn't come to the to the 2019 yeah. to the Prostejov to the World Tour. Yeah. But the, yeah, I remember Matthew forgetting his uh, his bag or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was uh, our, that was an unbelievable experience too. I mean, biggest pool in Europe, you know. <laughs> It's interesting, you know, Alex, that you mentioned like all of these like memories. It's like you yeah. remember the experiences, not so much like tennis, you know, like you you always yeah, yeah, yeah. remember. Uh, so for for me, like as a as a coach, it's and for all the coaches that were touring with Tennis Canada, that was our biggest priority to really yeah. make sure that we have at least one day off yeah. where, where we could just walk and like see the city, do something fun because in the end like those memories stay forever in your life you know like you will lose second round or like whatever like or we go to semis sure yeah. but you know like those are the the moments you you really oh, for sure. carry I, over you know with your no with, you did life. Uh, honestly you you did a great job I, I don't, <laughs> you couldn't have done it better because because you know we had priorities you know we had a strict i remember because you were still strict, you know. We had so much fun, but yeah, know, no, we we were, yeah, no, I remember, like it was pretty. I pretty remember strict. because there I was, was no uh, messing around. Yeah, I was I was rooming with Stuart, and then you said, you know, curfew nine thirty, and then we were giggling at nine forty five, and then you're eavesdropping whatever, and then you told us, <laughs> let's go run. So we so then we 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 started running. So that was, uh, I mean, those were again all great experiences. Now before you know, before I have a big match, any match. I go to bed on time, you know, it doesn't matter who I'm playing. So I mean, Re remember like how, how Stuart was pissed at you that you didn't go to sleep the day before your uh, world match against, uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, you were playing this. Uh, we were playing Jap in... Japanese. No, we were playing Japanese. Uh, Japan or Egypt. Uh, I, can't I think we were playing Japan, like the yeah. first, uh, yeah, Japan, 100%. Uh, yeah, yeah, first, yeah, yeah. first match and uh, we lost, unfortunately, three and three, yeah. I think the first match. Yeah, yeah. And Stuart was so pissed because he knew you didn't go to bed. And, okay. But, you know, like, and uh, again, again, unfortunately, that's, you know, that was an important match. We, and, you yeah. know, like, you could have done better preparation. But, yeah. again, going forward, you took so much out of it. You know, like, you learned. It's like, man, I, I messed up. I, you know, maybe you felt some responsibility. I felt some responsibility for, you know, for didn't qualify for, didn't qualify for um like the top uh top eight like next round um so 
and that's how we learn, right? That's that's yeah. that's the best. So look, I'm I'm gonna bring it back a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna ask you if you remember, like you were saying. I just want to talk about different sports, you know, because uh, as a coach, I'm always trying to make other uh, players and especially younger players that I'm involved with right now, like to have them play other sports. And I'm talking to parents. So did you play other sports other than I, I know you mentioned soccer, uh, yeah. but uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Like what, what did you do off the, off the court? Yeah. Um, 12 well, and under mainly. Yeah. I mean, I also played volleyball a lot. Yeah. I was always on the school team for volleyball. I was mm. probably the best player because of my serve because mm. of, tennis so nice. um volleyball I was always one of you know like the captain of the team um I really liked volleyball until until grade seven grade eight so when I was 13 14 then you know I stopped playing because obviously I had tennis practice morning afternoon mm -hmm. there was no time for me to for me to practice with uh with the school team and and the teachers also thought it was unfair for me you know, to be on the team when I'm not attending practices, you know, which makes sense. Um, also, um, for soccer, I started playing soccer when I was seven. And then I quit when I was about nine, you know, just because, honest, just because I like tennis a lot more. Really. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, you specialize, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's still um, time. Also, um, the coach was was a little crazy, you know, uh, <laughs> big guy as well. Um, What's the difference? Tell, tell me, because I never really understood this fine line. I mean, I, I like on a subconscious level, I understand it, but like from a player's perspective, what is the difference between really crazy coach? Yeah. Okay. Because some coaches are flat out crazy, yeah. but some coaches are strict and you still respect them and follow their, like uh, their lead. So what the hell? Like yeah. from the player's perspective, how do you know that this guy means well for me? Yeah. So, um, so what crosses the line for me, you know, um, is, is at the point where I feel disrespected, you know, mm -hmm. that, that there's, there's a certain extent where the coach can be strict. I'm fine. If the coach yells at me, it's, you know, I, it's fine. Well, it can help me learn, you know, it can help me be more focused but when it comes to the point where the coach is almost insulting you that's mm -hmm. when i okay. that's when i notice you know that that it just can't work for me also yeah. also um it has to do with because you know i i've had a few altercations you know some sometimes in the past where you know a coach just wasn't right for me mm -hmm. and the way i also found out is before practice i was never eager and excited to to let's say have a private with, mm -hmm. with the coach, you know that's how that's also how i know okay this there's too much negative energy around mm -hmm. this environment is it's not a learning environment you know so when, whenever i'm um i'm not excited for practice or you know um happy to be on court with whoever then that that's when i realize okay you know we need to cut it you know yeah no for sure that's that's great insights i mean i'm sure yeah. a lot of um you know like kids or parents who are listening to this might yeah. you know might actually maybe switch coaches or maybe keep that in <laughs> mind for later but i yeah. think that's great i mean that's that's you know like uh, yeah that's important that you want to learn like i i remember i'll never forget this this phrase that i that i heard that kids um they they don't they don't want to learn uh oh no they um they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care you know so it's like it's important that you the kid understands okay you you represent their best interest yeah. and yes you're being strict but it's for for their best they they have to feel so like good. yeah that's right it's also the same with parents you know yeah, i mean 100 my, my parents you know they're you know they're strict you know eastern european normal you know but i mean they've i've gone such a long way i think I'm, I mean, I'm so fortunate, honestly, because I'm, you know, I'm going to a great school next year. I'm, I'm playing tennis, you know, a very yeah. prestige sport. You know, I'm, I would consider at least on a national and international level, I'm very good at it. So, 
my parents and my brother, you know, they helped me out so much. Even, you know, we've had, a, we've had difficult times just like every other family, you know, but 100%. The the day, they always want the best for me and I know it. So. Yeah. And, and, and your family is great. Like knowing your, your mom and your dad and your, not so much your brother, but a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, 100% like, uh, you know, they were very supportive. They were not too much um yeah. in it like obviously they cared and they wanted yeah. you know the best but they were not to the point where they were like interfering and like not yeah. letting the coaches do their their job like they were super supportive and, and trusting yeah. the, the process like that's for sure that's that goes a long way so yeah 100 yeah. percent. speaking of parents and uh, and coaches maybe you can talk a little bit about have you ever felt um pressure from either parents uh, or coaches yes yeah can you talk a little bit about that when it happened yeah. and and what sure. way yeah I mean um even even this year I mean I even at age of 17 I, I still feel pressure um um you know from parents and coaches especially um this is more on the side of college coaches because mm -hmm. before I was before I verbally committed end of July it was obviously, there was obviously a lot of pressure for me to perform well, you know, to, to be offered a spot on the team, not only to be offered a spot, but to also receive a, a good scholarship, you know, and that definitely put a lot of pressure on me, you know, uh, overthinking. And then in, in, uh, you know, in May, in May, I ha I was very up and down some incredible wins, some, some not so good uh, losses. Um, but you know, it, like, you know, Billie Jean pressure is a privilege. So <laughs> I think, I think I overcome it, uh, overcame it pretty well. Um, but what helped you? Yeah. Yeah. No, it did. And, uh, and with what, what, what helped you? Sorry. Like what, which, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, what helps me? Oh, um, right. just routines, uh, help me, um, you know, uh, 50, Half an hour before your match, I zone out, you know, just go somewhere alone, go to the gym, bike, don't talk to anyone because, because a few years ago, you know, I was always very social, as you know, and then I, I go on court, you know, I missing balls in the warm up and, and stuff. So I think having just a consistent routine is very important, um, but also being relaxed, you know, mm -hmm. don't, don't be so tensed up, you know, I, I try to, I try to always think, think, you know, um, positively and, you know, there, there are worse things in life, you know, uh, no, uh, for sure. <laughs> so, so that's, that's, so that's why, uh, I, I actually handle pressure pretty well, I think compared to a lot of other kids. Um, so I think routine is number one always. That's um, nice. And then, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, my, uh, my parents, you know, they put pressure on me, you know, I feel pressure from them, but there's there's never been a moment where i think where oh my my parents are you win this match you know mm -hmm. in in this you know and they're they're always supportive no matter what you know they're they can be di disappointed by results but at the end of the day you know i'm so it's more it's more like healthy pressure in terms of yes like yes. it's it's like let me maybe correct me if i'm wrong i'm just like you know like guessing here but it's more like you wanting to do good for them, you know, like in, you wanting yeah. to impress them or like to, to you know, like to yeah. show them how good you yeah. are than them saying, oh, like if you don't win this match, man, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's more, it's more, it's more like, it's more like you wanting to be a good son, you know, or you wanting to be a good student for your coach and like making sure that you don't, um, you know, that you deliver certain expectations that's how it, that's exactly how it is okay. because because i you know it's sometimes me who puts pressure on myself because my parents have sacrificed so much for my brother and i you know um to to do well obviously the uh princeton you know they out of all the kids i was i was the last pick of the class of 2023 20, oh, wow. so obviously they had some they had they had a belief in me you know that i'm going to be a good player so yeah. I try to deliver, like you said, even after my verbal commitment, I still feel pressure regardless, because that's just who I am. Some kids feel 
oh, you know, now I can sit back, relax. <laughs> yeah, go uh, to yachts with the girls, you know. Go to yachts with the girls. <laughs> but, but, you know, um, I still want to deliver because my parents have sacrificed so much time, money, everything in, into tennis. So, and, you know, um, especially my dad, he's very – he wants me to do very well. I, I can tell, you know, because he calls me all the time, make sure to do this, this, eat, everything. So, um, yeah, I just try to deliver, like like you said. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. So Alex, if you, if you remember, um, again, like when you were, uh, when you were 12, yeah. do you remember how many hours you played? Um, I played, um probably 13 14 hours a week okay so just like in that ltad like what whatever you know like they recommend yeah so um, so probably two hours a day six six times a week so mm -hmm. six days a week so yeah 12 hours that that was and then maybe some extra hitting with my brother but it was never yeah. it was never okay. you know, excessive you know that makes sense that makes sense and you did some fitness as well uh, on the side before Tennis Canada. I know, obviously, at the Tennis Canada, we did it like every day, like five times. It, it a was, week. it was, it was on court fitness. Yeah, it was, okay. but it wasn't every day. It was four hours, uh, five hours a week. Which so. is still not like it's, it's, it's still a, a good, good yeah. amount of, uh, when you're twelve years old. So, yeah. um, it was definitely a full a full time job even when I was twelve. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's good though. Like it's I again the reason I'm asking because I talk to to a lot of parents and the the parents that I'm like the kids who I'm coaching, you know, like and just trying to un make them understand that it's it's a lot of work, you know, if you want to become a national level player, or if you want your child to become a national level player, like it's it's a lot of commitment and it's a lot of hours and it's like we have to make sure that we maintain certain level of um you know um you know like certain level of uh, of coaching certain level of activities surrounding tennis so it's not just like okay we play like for six hours it's not enough like if you're if your child is you know so it's like that's why i want you to to kind of to hear your perspective about it so that's why it's important okay I, yeah. alex probably probably the last question for for today um if you were to um to recommend something or to say something to the younger generation like you to a to a 10 year old you know or like a 12 year old um who's training right now like what what would be your maybe like three advices like let's do like okay. top three from alex yeah um so number one would be no matter what um always try to you know tr whether it's training or a match you know it's it's kind of a simple thing, but always work hard no matter what, because, because something I regret um, for me is that sometimes I didn't really put all my heart, you know, in like, because my brother, I was so fortunate to have my brother, you know, and he was coaching me and I was, I was, I was very stubborn, honestly. And I didn't listen to him that much. Oh yeah. Um, I remember so, not, not, not just to your brother. <laughs> yeah, not just to my brother. Yeah. But I was stubborn in general, yeah. So and I and I thought I knew everything, but in reality, I I, I knew nothing. So so I think just work hard every single day is a hundred percent my number one thing. And second thing might not be so popular, but stretching is I think so key because I mean I had I've had such long term issues with my rotator cuff and 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 you know you it's not fun you know having injuries especially when you're successful and you're doing well so i think stretching at a young age and just building building really good habits mm -hmm. um, you know eating well even drinking a lot of fluids in your matches electrolytes i know kids don't drink too many electrolytes uh when they're young so i think they should, you know that's one thing they should do and um i think stretching is very important before and after practice um and then the third thing would be i'm just gonna think what well, what would i have wanted to do yeah that's that's great exactly yeah um it's it's definitely just it's, it's a little difficult to explain but it's just being 
present, you know, it, it, being in the moment, you know, don't, don't think about results and stuff. Oh, that's key because results, guys, I promise results do not matter from the age of five to the age of 15. It, it's, it's 14, 15. It does not matter at all. It's, it's about developing as a player, you know, Shapovalov wasn't, he was always an amazing, very talented boy, but he wasn't the greatest player at the age of 13, 14, you know, he was, he just always had an amazing game. And then once everything started going in, that's when he took off. So I think don't be so hard on yourself. If, if you're losing to one of your best friends, you know, like Sasha, I, had such, <laughs> I was going to say, I had man, such you a, would, you guys would always be like so pissed when you would lose to one another. I mean, Sasha and I's ri rivalry is some like the best rivalry. That's I mean, right. I've I've had. I think OTA. It's one of the best OTA rival uh, rivalries. Um, you work as well, like for for you, like Stuart, especially Stuart playing Gordon. him in the finals of nationals a couple times. Yeah, yeah. No, Stewart as well. Um, you know, Haitham, of course. Well, I had a very intense match with him, but Sasha is number one because Sasha you know, one of my best friends ever since I was such a little guy, the amount of times I've played tennis with him. I mean, I, I don't know how many practices I had with him, you know, even here in Florida, I trained with him mm -hmm. and I played him head to head. I don't know how many times he's winning head to head, unfortunately, but, <laughs> but so I think um, just don't be, you know, don't be butthurt if you're losing to someone you want to beat so badly at such a young age. It's, it's really not important. It's just about developing as a player. You know, you you want to you want to focus on the present and and see how you're going to become better over time, long term. You know, not not short term. Yeah, so. no, that's that's great to hear it. Uh, you know, from actually not you know like a, a player who's you know only like 17. You yeah, know, it's, it's very important that I think younger players hear that because yeah, that's I think it's they're getting lost sometimes not only like players but also parents and because i mean you can understand them because there it's a lot of money it's a lot of time commitment yeah so you kind of want to like get that yeah. um you know return on your investment fast but uh you, you're right like you gotta take it slow and you gotta you know focus on your game in the end your game gets you wins right not not just uh yeah exactly and, wanting and, them <laughs> yeah exactly and like you know everyone has a different path You know, everyone has a different journey. I mean, take uh, take for example uh, Keegan Rice. You know, he yeah. uh, he you know he was always he wasn't very good. He wasn't he honestly he, he wasn't a good player um, under 12, under 14, and then under 16 he was okay. You know, but I still wouldn't mind getting him first, second round at nationals. And now all of a sudden, you know, this year he wins a J1. You know, in uh, Kentucky's. That's right top six, top, uh, or top 70, top 80 ITF, you know, he's taking off a very good player. He just won a futures uh, doubles, you know, wow. I mean, he, he's, uh, he's playing very well, you know, so everyone has a different path. If, if you asked me a year ago or two years ago when he was 15, is this guy going to be doing what he is doing right now? I mean, no chance. So yeah. that's that makes why. sense. No, yeah. that's, that's good messages. I think, It's the it's a perfect message to to finish our conversation, Alex. Uh, listen, I really appreciate your time um, and a lot of good insights uh, you shared today. I think it was very valuable for everybody to hear, uh, including myself. You know, um, so thanks a lot, and uh, you know, like let's stay in touch and uh, just yeah. good luck in your uh, at your party later tonight. <laughs> Let me know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for sure. I'm looking for more details, man. <laughs> All right, man. All right, cheers. All right, thanks. Yeah.